Welcome back, gamers, to Let's Play Alter Ego. This is your benevolent host, SKS, taking you on a tour of my life. Today we should finish up the, what stage am I in? The uh, childhood stage. So, we're going to continue here, and just to give you a review real quick of my awesome statistics, except for my calmness and my vocational, which not really do anything job-wise to pertain to those. But we'll see what we can get into today. This is probably going to be a shorter video than the other ones. I've got to actually make an appointment here soon, so we'll see what happens. Let's see how far we can get. Your friends are still waiting for you to come out. Your friends are all waiting for you to come out after school. You have a ton of homework, and you've been watching television since you came home. On your way out, your mother asked, "Did you do all your homework?" Um, honest and say no. Your mother replies, you're not going out unless you do all your homework. You can stay in 15 minutes of fake the homework. Let's just stay in and do the homework because I'm smart. I'm going to do my stuff. Familiar and emotional characteristics increase because you're honest. Socially, your score drops slightly because you'll lose the play experience with friends. Aww. Alright, I hate how this scrolls all the way up when, you know, whatever. Alright. There's one more ice pop in the freezer that's being saved for no it's being saved for another family member. Your mouth waters at the thought of this cool, tasty treat. I'm hungry, but I'm gonna leave it alone. Cause it's saved for somebody else. You're learning to be a master of your impulses. This is good practice for adolescents, which often presents you with the goodies that are much harder to resist. Yeah, I wonder what they're talking about. Hmm. We'll find out, gamers. We'll find out. Congratulations! You've just passed through childhood phase of life. Family life is progressing very well. This happens every video. I always stop it right before. Oh, well. Family life is progressing very well. Dad is still the greatest hero of all time, and Mom is pretty, pretty, pretty terrific, too. Physically, you are healthy. Well, that's good. You contract the standard fare of childhood diseases, assorted sniffles, coughs, bumps, and stomach aches. Socially, this can be an awkward phase of life, especially when you hit the ripo age of 9 or 10. Should you like girls? Should you not like girls? Decisions. I'm going to like girls. There's no decisions. All in all, you're developing good social skills. You don't always close your mouth when you're chewing food, but hey, nobody's perfect. Now, regarding your emotional and personality development. You are a remarkable, trustworthy young man. Your sense of ethics and fair play are quite remarkable for a child your age. You have a gentle, easygoing way about you most of the time. You have not had very many schoolyard bras, and you seem to be able to control your temper even when the girls giggle as you walk by. Hmm. wonder why they giggle. I must have left my dick out again. I'm not... Oh, that's not going to sound good. I dread the comments on that. You're about to enter adolescence. It is somewhat hectic time of life, full of surprises. There will be very many high... Very... There will be many... There will be many very high highs and many low lows. With each year, you will gain responsibilities. You may also notice that people will begin to start forgiving you less for things previously described as more childhood habits. You will be expected to leave your burping and other questionable talents in the social circles where they are unanimously approved of, your peer group. Oh yes, then there's the matter of girls. If you haven't noticed them much in this phase, watch out. They've noticed you. Sweet. Welcome to adolescence. He was a bold man that first eat an oyster. Jonathan Swift. Polite conversation, dialogue one. I think that the man who ate the egg when it came out of the chicken's ass was more of a bold man. Just saying. Alright, so. My statistics are all kind of the same. My social has dipped. I need to really go out and change that. Um, so we're going to work on that, hopefully here soon. Alright, so let's see here. We have new icons. This is school. Relationships. This dude's taking a shit. Risk. And work. Hmm, anything different on the... Uh... We got more vocationals. There's not a lot of these. So, let's... Let's have a school. Aww. Are there any of these? Let's see, meet someone. Let's meet some. Hold that thought, gamers. All right, sorry about that. So let's meet somebody. Um, let's meet somebody in school because we're in school. 
Uh, Cindy, Louise, Marion, Ruth, Betsy, Ann. Oh, let's go for Ann. Ann sounds like a good name. You have chosen to meet with Ann. Her characteristics are, may describe, be described as follows. She is moderately trustworthy, moderately gentle. Mod she is not very happy. She is very confident. She is moderately attractive. Aw, she's not interested in me right now. That sucks. Oh, well, can we do work? You're too young. Concentrate on your schoolwork. Let's take a risk. Mr. Black! I, had a, I worked for a principal named Mr. Black once. Mr. Black is the most hated teacher in the entire school. He's an ex-Marine drill sergeant who teaches gym class. Recently, he made every guy in your entire class do 100 push-ups just because somebody sneezed funny. A couple of the kids are planning on getting back at him by slashing his tires. The plan is to meet outside after school. One person will watch while the others... No. I am not going to do that. So let's go down here and work on some of these. You are too young for this episode. Try again. Um, can I skip it? You and a group of your friends are getting together to go to a movie. Your best friend and his date are picking you up at your house. And the three of you are meeting everyone else, including your own date. At the theater, the doorbell rings and you are greeted by a dark-haired beauty with sparkling eyes and a devastating figure. She smiles at you and tells you her name is Cheryl. Your friend is waiting in the car because he isn't feeling well. In the car in the movies, you and Cheryl make small talk. After all, your best friend isn't feeling up to par. You wouldn't want Cheryl to have a lousy time and resent him. Besides, your date seems to be engrossed in the movie. Well, she's not even showing me any... She doesn't seem to mind either. Midway through the movie, your friend pulls you aside and asks if you wouldn't mind taking Cheryl home. He knows she is enjoying the movie and he isn't feeling too ill. Okay. Compassionate or di di dispassionate? Uh, I feel sorry for him. Take Cheryl home. Tell him to take her home himself. I'll take her home. Uh, what will you do? Take your date home first? Take Cheryl home? Hmm. 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 I'm going to take my date home first because she was more interested in the movie. With you and Cheryl alone in the car, Cheryl mentions what a great friend you must be and thanks you for being so considerate all the way around. She invites you inside her house for a few minutes. Let's go inside. Cheryl gets you a cold drink and sits down next to you on the couch. She jokes that she feels as if you were her date for the night. After all, you took sh you took such good care of her. She thanks you and kisses you on the cheek. After she kisses you, she keeps her face close to yours. She looks at you for a long second and begins to bring her lips up close to yours. Kiss her, stop her from kissing you. I'm going to kiss her. One kiss leads to another, and another, and another. You're completely taken in by Cheryl's advances, and you leave exhausted. Will you ever mention this incident to your date or your friend? No! <laughs> oh, that made me feel so good. Um, let's take another risk. You're sitting in the school library bored to death. It is a warm spring day, and the sun is streaming through the windows. Lighting up a square area on the desk in front of you, you are wishing for a distraction to take you away from the research project you are supposed to be doing. Suddenly, a terrific looking girl in a red miniskirt and t-shirt sits in the study area directly across from you. She crosses her legs under her. She settles into her seat and begins work. You can smell her perfume from where you are sitting. Continue. Trying to look as intelligent as possible, you start running furiously, hoping to attract her attention. Her eyes remain glued to her own work. Continue. I don't have to act intelligent. I am intelligent. You ask her if she knows what time it is. Continue. She looks up for a brief moment, shakes her head back and forth, and puts her head down. You notice a rather large watch on her left wrist. Fuck this. I'm going to push. You're not one who gives up easily. About ten minutes pass. She gets up from her seat and walks toward the back of the library. You notice that she has left her purse and some of her books behind. She's probably just going to the ladies' room. Continue. The sun is warm and relaxing. You wish she would come back soon. Continue. You feel a soft hand encircle your shoulder and hear someone whisper, What are you doing your project on? Dreaming? The smell of perfume stirs from your stirs you from your doze. You try to think of something clever to say, hoping you use this opportunity to get her phone number. Um continue. You say when you came in I thought you were too beautiful to be real, so I went to sleep hoping I would meet you in my dreams. Wow. Players who want to continue may take a few seconds to gag, if necessary, before proceeding. <laughs> when you came in, I thought you were too beautiful to be real, so I went to sleep hoping you'd be in my dreams. Hmm. 
Wow. So let's continue. This is kind of getting interesting. You look up. Mrs. Eschbach, the librarian. Oh no, she says. I've been haven't been smoking to like that in ages. Ages. You're so sweet. Now get back to work. She waddles off. <laughs> let's continue. The girl comes back, picks up her things, and leaves. Ah, that's so sad. Later that evening, you leaf through papers and discover a note. Oh, really? The note says, sat with you in the library today. Can't think of anything more interesting to say than do you know what time it is? If you can, why don't you give me a call and say it? 555-9854-PAM. SCORE, GAMERS! YEAH! Continue. You call, but the line seems to be constantly busy. Well, that's sad. Finally, you hear the line ringing. Someone picks the phone. Hello, Thrifty City Sleep Shop. Can I help you? What? Your heart sinks, but you give it one last futile try. Is Pam there? Speaking. You introduce yourself and tell her that she's been on your mind all day. Your social status fear suggests that you don't have the skills to impress this type of girl. She gives you the brush off over the phone and you never see her again. Oh, that's sad. A little while later, you've found a new way of expressing yourself through the way you comb your hair straight up. Your family is somewhat supportive, but every once in a while... What? Why did this jump from that to this? Your family is somewhat supportive, but every once in a while, someone can't help giggling as you walk by. Your dad makes a crack about staying away from open light sockets. That didn't even make sense. I don't know. So, I need to work on my social skills. I'm still too young for that episode. Let's try this one. A group of your friends are getting together for a toga party this Friday. Friday. Excited or not interested? I'm excited, and I will go to the party. You arrive at the party, stunningly draped in one of your mom's best sheets. On the table, there is beer, wine, and hard liquor. Someone mentioned that there are drugs available for sale from a person at the other end of the room. What would you prefer to have? Um, I'm too young to be hitting liquor, so we're going to hit beer or wine. How wild would you like to get? Let's get wild. Are you planning on trying to meet any girls at this party? Well, yeah. For some reason, you become very inhibited. <laughs> inhibited. You meet a similarly uninhibited girl and have an utterly uninhibited time. The two of you fall asleep in the girl's car. <laughs> Did that improve my social score at least? <laughs> oh, that's funny. You're shopping at the drugstore. It's almost closing time. The manager is letting customers out one by one, keeping the door locked so no one else can come in. Suddenly, the man in front of you at the cash register takes out a gun and announces a holdup. He smells heavy of alcohol, and it looks as if the gun could be fake. Um... He's drunk. Let's be brave and try to stop him. He is drunk and the gun is fake. You are surprised at how easily he is to subdue. You don't realize your own strength. As you wrestle with him, you hit him with the nose and break it. He is a pitiful character who begins to cry before the police arrive. Sweet, I'm a fucking hero. Can I do this one yet? Why would they put it at the bottom if you're not old enough for it? Uh, your best friend since grade school has been looking depressed and confused. He is usually a very happy-go-lucky person, so you can't really understand what could be wrong. Um, let's be sympathetic or disinterested. We'll be sympathetic and ask him what's wrong. He tells you there's nothing wrong, but you can see by his face is he deeply troubled. Um, well, let's keep pressing him. After much hesitation, he lowers his eyes and blurts out that he thinks he is a homosexual. Hmm, poor dude. Thought he would go out there and get him some and help him out. He's worried if he tells his any friends, they will desert him, and he will be laughed at. What are you feeling right now? <sighs> I would be shocked that somebody told me that. You can't bring out the shock from showing in your face. Your friend sees this and inter interprets it as disapproval. As a result of learning this information, what will become your friendship with this person? Um... I offer support, but suggest he get help to sort out his feelings. This was the most considerate thing you could have done for this young man. Taking on the responsibility of being a sole source of support for him might have made him overly dependent on you. This could have put a strain on your friendship. As a result of your suggestion, your friend learns how to deal with his homosexuality, and the two of you remain close friends. 
A little while later, an all-girls school has asked for one member of your class to be a guest exchange student there for a month. Just think, one whole month in a school that is nothing but wall-to-wall -wall girls. Gym class will never be better. Students are reviewed for consideration. The principal has your name in front of him. You have the right intellectual capabilities. Socially, you're so sophisticated enough. Unfortunately, your emotional characteristics suggest you're too impulsive and would probably have trouble controlling your hands, your mouth, and who knows what else. <laughs> oh, gamers. SKS strikes again. Wow. I don't even know about that. Woo! But, let's see, can we do this one now? God, I want to do that one. I'm very excited about it. Let's see. While you're shopping in town one day, a woman who introduces herself as a photographer tells you that you're very handsome and that she might be able to get some modeling work for you. She gives her your card. I don't want to be a model. Um, and I'm going to throw the card out. I guess you feel a life of fame, fortune, and stardom is not for you. Nope. Uh, vocational. <sighs> Must be employed. Am I old enough to get a job yet? Does that mean I can do this one? No. Urgh, can we do a school thing? Alright. Your grade on your last science test was terrible. Today after school, Mrs. Hickley is offering a help session to those who did poorly. Your dilemma, should you go to the help session or an after school party at your friend's house? I want to keep my grades up, so let's go to the help session. Mr. Hickley is ten minutes late. Will you leave? Stay. Uh, let's stay. Professors or teachers get some time. As it turns out, Mrs. Hickley is a bit of a flake. He forgot all about the help session he offered and went home right after school. You can go to the party after all. Sweet! You're starving and the cafeteria line seems to be moving very slowly. Today's menu includes meatballs, cardboard pizza, and chicken pies. About the only thing edible seems to be the french fries and the white powdered donuts. You take a portion of fries, but by the time you get to the cash register, you've already finished them. You can keep walking through and say you decided to skip lunch. Pay for the fries. <sighs> They're fries. Pay for them. It's a good thing you didn't try to sneak through. Millie, the cafeteria lady, can smell french fry breath from 200 yards away. A little while later... One day you overhear your mother and father talking about the fact that they're very short on money and the bank is ready to foreclose on their mortgage. Oh, shit. Because of your familial sphere status indicates good family relationships, you pull through this period of hardship with few, few difficulties. I don't like these little surprise moments. These are kind of scary. All right, gamers. Well, I've got to run out of time. I've got to actually run down to the grandparents, so I'm going to cut this episode off now. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Let's Play Alter Ego. As you could tell, it's starting to really get interesting. Um, starting to get into some sexual encounters, and I'm I'm ready to bang, 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 bang. So, hopefully next time we'll run into some more than that. This is SKS signing off. Good night, gamers.